attention of avid anglers across the country. But how many of them are fishing them during the fall of the year? When most people are hanging up the fishing rod to take to the deer woods, the Safe Charter team has climbed the backwaters of the eastern basin of Lake Ontario in search of these huge fish. Today, the Safe Charter team is looking at Berkeley flicker minnows and the very best colors that you'll need to be successful this season. Let's join the action right now as Captain Mike Howard is fighting one of our first fish of the day. Locked in battle on an inside board here. That's a 75 foot set. Randy Pound getting our Tripsy diver out of the water right there. He's gonna put that back in. Put it right in the Tripsy holder, Randy. That way if we gotta reset, we can. This one didn't trip right here, so Mike's bringing it in. We're getting it past that inside, past that inside board. Might have got buried a little deep in the release there when on the setup here coming down through. The uh, what was our number two? What was our number two line out on that one, Frank? Do you remember what the middle rod was? I want to say that's the purple bangle. Purple bangle. Okay. They have verified it. We have the pilot saying it's purple bangle and the man on the rod saying it's purple bangle. So, Mike Dents, we have verification. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Could be a flashy ghost. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Mike, even if you're not sure, you gotta act like you're sure. <laughs> oh, that's right. We did I, change I that up. <laughs> Right here, so I'm, I'm saying it's flashy ghost. Oh my! Yeah, this is a test. Frank, give me neutral. We're running a little shallower set on the inside, even though the boat's in 24, 25 feet of water. There's an edge, this right there, that comes up. There's a flat, and what those walleyes like to do is lay just under the steep edge. Um, we're gonna come into deep water up onto the edge of that flat that lay right in that seam. So even though the boat's in deep enough water where you could expect to run these flickers at a you know 100 to 130 and not get caught, it's not gonna be the case. You're gonna have to run a little shallower on the inside. Neutral Frank. Easy on it. Caught up on the front one, be careful. Yeah, get ready, Mike. Wind forward, all the way to the left now. There we go, all the way to the left. The reason he's pushing over onto that side is because we've still got a weight rod running right here down the side. We want to keep that fish away from it. Neutral, Frank. Nice even pressure on him, Mike. Forward, Frank. Try to keep him out of this weight rod if we can. Really good fish. Neutral, staying right down, neutral. Staying under that, staying under that rod. Forward, he's coming right in here, Randy. What's your counter say, Mike? Oh, got him. Exactly. I can see fish out there. Neutral. Nice, nice fish. See him right here. I'm gonna get right on the water here. We're gonna watch this. We're gonna watch this. Wind down, Mike. Stay right neutral, Frank. Stay right neutral, big guy. Wind down. Wind down, Mike. Easy. Right, raise him. Okay, get him, Randy. Get him. Big guy. Forward. Keep that. There's a giant walleye. That's what we're looking for right there. And uh, hold on, they had the courage of their own conviction, guys. Let's take a look at this right here. There is the flashy ghost right in his yapper right there. Mike, put a little uh, put a little light bat on him here if you can. There he is. What a dandy, dandy, dandy walleye right there. Came in classic fight, Mike. He stayed deep right off the corner, didn't he? Yes, he did. I mean, it stayed deep the whole way down to the thing. Uh, yeah, I personally think uh, that flashy ghost uh, 75 right there, I, I think he stayed, you know, probably uh, less than 20 feet uh, from the surface the entire fight. Yeah, he was right He was right on that edge. Randy's holding the flashy ghost right there. You can see that thing. That. Yeah, yeah, that thing's working. That thing's working good all the time. Big, big fish right here. I'm going to say that that fish right there. If he's not 12, he's 11 and a half. Yeah, he's knocking. He's knocking right on the door. 
Good job, boys. Let's uh, take a look at the business end and how we set these boards. And uh, let's take everybody in the in the viewing audience to a little tech segment here on setting these boards up, and we'll show them what we're doing, okay? Mike Howard did a great job getting that fish in, but as we were mentioning during the fight, that's right along the edge of a steep rock edge, and you can see the chafing of that fluorocarbon. One of the things about fluorocarbon is it's, it's pretty much invisible, but it's also stiff, and it... Uh, it does not give you a lot of room for error. So every time a plug comes up, we're gonna check that and we're gonna make sure that we haven't jeopardize that line in any way shape or form now what we're doing here is we're tying on a tri lean knot or what's known as an improved clinch so we're going to go in that we've looped it in there two or three times we're going to go around the bait we're going to drop it back through through itself and as we pull that tight we're going to wet that with a little saliva and pull that down because we know friction is monofilament and fluorocarbon's worst enemy. So now that's good, it's nice and clean. Here's how we're gonna set that board. We're using Akuma dead eye rods and we're using uh, Convector 20D reel. So we've zeroed the depth counter to three zeros. We're gonna drop this thing in. The other thing that we do is we make sure that in the fight that that flicker minnow it's still running true, and it is. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this thing back. We're at a 65, 75, 75 set. We're doing that because we're skinny on the inside, but we've got fish that are down in the 20 to 25 foot range over deeper water. So the set on the outside is 130, 120, 110. Now once we hit 65, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, come on right in here, Andy. We're gonna wind this line, put some put some loops in it. We've got a right-hand board that's gonna, go, that's gonna go out this side. We're gonna wrap that line and we're gonna drop it into the front pinch pad. And then what we do is we pull that loop down so that it barely shows and set it. Now our line going back to the lure goes into the red release at the back. And if you look in there, there's a pin down in the bottom of that. And it's important that this line goes behind the pin. That's so when a fish gets on, we can strip it out of here. The rear release holds it. The board flips back into the position of uh, least resistance. And now that fish will swing right to the center in our pattern and he'll be ready all the way in. Now, inside board still set, outside board still set. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop this board in the water. It's going to be very hard to see with this particular uh, with this particular camera. So we're going to let that back. There you can see the board just right in itself. It's going straight out the middle of the boat. No it's tangles. going straight out the back of the boat right now. No tangles. Once it's out, a, suffi a sufficient distance, we're going to engage the reel and it's going to swim around our inside board and it's going to move right back to the middle position. So unlike big planer boards where you have to let the lines out and reset on the inside, with these small boards, when we're small board fishing for walleyes, we can adjust independently on each board. We can maneuver it into position, whether it's in the outside position, middle, or inside. Now all we do is we come over here, we drop that back into the rod holder, we let that swim back into position, and it's exactly where it was when we hooked that walleye. It'll be right back at 75 foot set on a flashy ghost, back in the middle position, ready to take another good walleye. Mike Howard, Locked up, middle rod. Big perch. Is it a big perch? You know, I told everybody, I told everybody, Mike, you know, don't touch that rod because I was going to come back and hit it. But what I wanted to illustrate, we can at least talk about it a little bit right now. Um, when these boards pull back, you can, you can see, if you look out here, how those boards are kind of running in line. So when a fish hits it, you're going to see the rod tip pull over. But what most anglers watch for is for that board to pull back out of the pattern with the weight of the fish. 
and everybody wants to be super fast, you know, running for that board and, and getting it right on. But you got to remember, you got the line going from the rod tip out to the board and then all the way back to the fish. So there's an angle there. So the more you let that from a physics standpoint, the more you let that board pull back in the pattern before you trip it, the easier it is to get immediately tight on the fish and not have a moment of slack line. So when you're fishing little boards, you don't want to be overzealous working for it. Neutral, you don't want to be overzealous going for that board. You want to take your time, let the fish pull it back. Then when you snap the release, you've got less uh, slack time. You're going to have a more positive hookup. You're going to land more fish. So Mikey's backing that up right now, and Mike Dents is going to take that right off. Going to pinch that. There you go, Mike. Wind right down and come right into it. <coughs> I see that fish, he's on top right there, Mike. See him? He's just the side of that other board. How deep are you, Randy? Uh, Frank Kolbach, step right into here for me, will you? Make the prediction, what do you think? It's all on the line now, buddy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, go, with a, I'm gonna go with a walleye. You are. I think that's a good choice. I'm thinking the same thing. Neutral. Start playing lower rod Mike Howard as he gets closer. Keep his head in the water. Nice walleye coming here. Perfect example of why you don't want to take that board too fast. Keep him coming, Mike. A little quicker. A little quicker so he doesn't shake. A little quicker. Okay, get him, Mike. There it is right there. Bring him right in. Right off in the net. Perfect example. Purple flash, Frank. There's that purple flash, and you can see uh, it's a veteran. You can see some of the war wounds on that, where the, the teeth of those eyes and what have you have got that. Purple, silver, pink belly. Beautiful, beautiful uh, yeah, fish right up. Bait. And a, yeah, there's a beauty. Nice walleye right there. Perfectly played. Mike Howard, he picked that up nice and slow, didn't he? Trip that, had good pressure on it all the way. Mike Howard did a great job on that fish. But well, you did a good job that, buddy boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're catching some great walleye and we're catching some pike. Let's take a look at some of the baits that we're using to access these fish and have success here in the eastern end of Lake Ontario. That right there is a Berkeley Flicker minnow. This particular one is, a, is an 11, four and a quarter inches in length. This particular bait you can see is silver, with a black ladder back and a tinge of purple on top of it. That one is called the Flashy Ghost. The four prominent bait colors that uh, we use to be successful on these fish are the Flashy Ghost, Flashy Pearl, which is a basic white bait, Slick Chartreuse, and that 11 size, and the purple bengal. Those are the four baits that absolutely have to be in the pattern each and every day. Now these flicker minnows, one of the nice things about this Berkeley flicker minnow is that from a price standpoint, anglers can afford to load their box up with a variety of, variety of different colors uh, because they're reasonable to buy. And what's nice about these is that they dive to 24 feet. So depending upon how much line you let out, you can vary them anywhere from eight or 10 feet down all the way to 24 feet in depth. If for some reason the fish are hanging deeper than that, then you can utilize a snap weight system or a gib or a delta weight to add some additional weight to the line and get that down into the 30 or 40 foot range. But flicker minnows, on what we're doing on walleyes and pike this year are absolutely where it's at. Flashy pearl, slick chartreuse, purple bengal, and flashy ghost. Those are the baits to have. Lock okay. on right here on the inside rod. Frankie, what are we running on the inside rod, buddy boy? The, uh... in. We got a flat. Flashy pearl, we got a we got a purple flash purple and we flash. purple flash. Purple flash. There we go. Bing bang boom. As soon as Mike clears this ran, we'll move it just a little bit, okay? Yeah, top. Oh yeah. 
It is. There's an eye. Come to the left, Frank. Yep, for sure. Look at the mouth on it. Yep. Neutral, Frank. Come over here, Randy. Let's get right over here on this side. We're going to work it in. Mike Howard, are you not? I will. Okay. Forward, Frank. Keep them coming. Our old buddy Mike Dents is with us today. Mike, tell everybody what you're about to do. About to take off the yellow bird for uh, Mr. Randy Pone. All right, good deal. We're going to get that. We've got that uh, on the red release with the pin on the back. We're going to show you in a technical segment in just a minute a way to modify this board to help you. Neutral. Keep them coming steady, Randy. Steady. Nice eye. Keep them coming. Over here to the right. Keep them coming. Might be a gator. I see a white belly. Wind forward. Might be a gator. Well, that their mouth was open, Frank, on top. It looked just like an eye. I could be wrong. Keep winding. It looks like... Looks like an eye. Yeah, it's an eye neutral. For sure it's an eye. Here he comes. Keep his head, yeah, keep his head right in. Rod tip slightly to the right. Keep him out of that other. That's it, just like that. Nice and steady. Mike, I'm going to be right next to you here. Stay right there, Frank. Keep him coming. Nice eye right here. All right, get 40, 40, 40 flashes. Get him, Mike. Go. There it is. Stop winding. Beautiful eye forward, Mike. That is uh, the second one on that purple. That's why when we talk about hypnotizing a walleye, it's so critical to keep constant steady pressure as you stop reeling when it gets to the leader seven feet from the fish you back up at the same pace that you're reeling so that that fish never senses a change in pressure one barb right there that's the only thing holding it that is a beautiful walleye right there you see that fin up advanced like that he's just a dandy superior fish and we missed another one mike dents good job with the board Mike Howard, good job with the net. Randall, nice job hypnotizing that fish to the back of the boat.